These guys are 1964, the tribute. How you guys doing? It's true, we all, you know. Hello, girl. Oh, oh my yes. goodness, oh, that accent just drives me it's wild. Cece the Huntress, we're very yes. impressed, you know. Well, I'm impressed with you guys. We have Mark right here, Mark Benson. We also have um, Bobby, Potter. Bobby Potter. We've got Tom Woods Works. Sorry. And we have, so. let, let me get it here. We have Graham Alexander. How'd I do? Good, guys? <laughs> Terrific. Now, I just have a couple questions to ask him. And first of all, I'm going to start with my Facebook questions uh -oh. because I've asked people on Facebook to ask you questions and right. they're waiting okay. to hear the answers. One of the questions is, how did the group get their name? Well, we decided, you know, because there were other groups doing this, and most of them had some sort of Beatles song title name or something like that, mm -hmm. you know, we decided that, you know, instead of, because we knew we were going to be touring around, instead of being confused with some other group when we come into their town, we chose something that was more about the year that they started. And it's basically sort of the idea behind what we do, too. We try and stay in the early material sort of rock and roll, you know, Beatle right. concert era. Okay, that's cool. And another question came from a guy. He was wondering about the groupies. How do you handle the groupies? With both hands, usually. Sometimes only one, though. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> and how do you handle the groupies? Very carefully. And how do you handle them, Graham? I don't know. Don't say. I don't. <laughs> don't say. <laughs> no idea. <laughs> How do you handle? Them? Well, you've got to get them lined up first, you see, mm -hmm. and then it's much easier. They're much more manageable that way, you see. <clears throat> I, I saw the crowd out front just a little while ago, and I did see all the girls out there. So th this is just terrific. What I want you to do is I want you to take the microphone and tell me a little bit about yourself, okay? I was born a poor boy. <laughs> um, I was born in Lawrenceville, Illinois, and um, I grew up in Lawrenceville, Illinois. And uh, then I set my sights on the West Coast, and I packed my bags, and I did my best, and here I am. I picked up the sticks in fifth grade, and I never put them down. And uh, I got my first set of drums in the seventh grade. And I was in three bands in high school, a top 40 band, a pep band, and a Tijuana brass band. That was a lot of fun. And uh, then, like I said, I set my sights on the West Coast, and I put my nose to the grindstone, like they say, and made my way up. And now I'm on the top tier. Uh, God, he looks so much like him. It's unbelievable. Mark. Yes. Hey. Yes, <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> I don't even know what to say. I got like so goose, goosebumps. Have you seen stuff. these shorts? Look at those. Look at that, will you? <clears throat> anyway. Tell me all about yourself, and tell me about your musical background. Oh, I as couldn't well. begin to tell you all about myself. <laughs> anyway. Oh, um, <laughs> okay. Well, first of all, what I'd like to say is, uh, anyway. <laughs> Uh, I started playing trumpet when I was a very little boy because I thought the sound of it was really uh, interesting and then I realized it was very difficult to sing playing the trumpet. So I went on to playing the drums because uh, a friend of mine behind me in the band while I was playing trumpet kept saying, oh, drums is much better than that. So we tried that for a bit and then I started playing guitar because you can't really sort of bring your drums to a party and say, hey, listen to this song I wrote. <laughs> so anyway. Uh, just thought, you know, and the Beatles have always been sort of a favourite of ours, you know, you can't really not like them, so, uh, we, it was, I was 11 when they first, you know, sort of were on television, so, it really sort of sparked my interest, and after that, you know, we just sort of played music, and I've been a guitar player, and sort of, I work on guitars, and make guitars, and uh, repair them, and all that stuff, so, it's always been a fascination of mine, and uh, now it's uh, evolved into this, you see. And we've been doing this all over the country for 28 years, I think it is now. Could it possibly be? It can't be that long. I don't know. I'll see you <clears> yes. So anyway, I'll pass you back to Cece. Here you go, love. <laughs> Thank you, dear. And we have Graham right here. Tell us a little bit about yourself in your uh, musical background. Uh, do I hold this? Oh, yeah, you can hold it. I'll hold oh, well, that's too. good. Yeah. Well, I, uh, I, I always liked the Beatles, and I'm a tenor. I don't know if you could tell by my speaking voice. Uh, because sometimes, you know, 
I mean, your voice is very low. So, you, you know, you're like down here, yeah. But, um, and uh, at one point I, I auditioned uh, for a, a show and, and long story short, here I am. And that was about it. That's terrific. <laughs> Do I, uh, we have... Hello. Tell us about yourself, baby. My name actually is not Tom, it's Marion, and I'm a librarian. <laughs> and I started off playing the trombone, 76 of them. <laughs> and I sang in a barbershop quartet, uh, because the quintet wouldn't have me. <laughs> so I, go on like this I had to settle for That's just right, three that. other mates, chaps, fellows. I started guitar when I was seven. I was only 10 when the Beatles came out. You were 11. I will always be older than you. I was only 10 when they came, came out, out, you know, sort of out, you know. <laughs> yeah. uh, go big. Out of Europe, I mean, of course, here. Mm -hmm. And on the Ed Sullivan Show, and my older sister watched the first show, but I couldn't have cared less because I wanted to play outside. But then I heard all the brouhaha about the Beatles, so I, I uh, watched the second week and the third week, and then I was bitten by the bug. Get it, get it, bitten yeah. by the bug. Yeah. Oh, the Beatles, yeah. Oh, my goodness. Thank you very much, Tommy. I want to ask you, what is your favorite Beatles album? Uh, I, all t 25 of them. I, haven't, I couldn't pick just one, you know, because as soon as you say, you know, oh, well, I love the Beatles' second album, then you realize how good Revolver is or Salt mm -hmm. and Pepper or all that, you know. So, right. I, sorry, I'm going to have to pass it over to Ringo. I can't pick just one. I'd have to pick six or seven. Okay, do you have a favorite song? Uh, well, that's, a, that's another difficult question also. Right. Um, New York, New York's a big one for you. Uh, yeah. That's always been my favorite. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's really hard to say. I like them all. Oh, try. Go on. Oh, uh, well, the first album probably hit me the hardest, you know. Okay. Um, and when you recovered? What song did you like the best? Well, you picked me up. I can't remember. <laughs> oh, yeah. We've got a bunch of comedians over here. I was wondering, do you feel you have a greater appreciation for the Beatles themselves um, since you formed uh, 1964, The Tribute? Do you have a greater appreciation for the artists, like what they might have gone through or how they might have been feeling or something like that? I didn't form it, so that might not be the best question. Well, you know, it's not about really forming so much. It's when you play the music, you really understand how all the parts fit together and how, right. what, you know, what geniuses they really were as far as, you know, being able to construct wonderful pop music that went far beyond the normal range of pop music. Exactly. And, you know, I, I felt that too. I used to sing in bands years ago and, um, you know, tooling around in high school and stuff, you'd groove to the music, you'd listen to, you'd have fun, but there was nothing that could compare when you had to replicate or get right. on that stage yes. and actually sing at full volume, seven nights a week, 40 songs a night. And people don't have an appreciation for the actual artists until they can sort of get into those shoes and, you know, put on a performance. It, it's, it's quite exhausting and tough. Now, now, to be in the tribute band, did you used to watch video clips? clips and, and pay attention to like like how they played and, and, and dressed and go, go ahead. I still am. Yeah. yeah, you can never stop learning, you know. Um, I'm, I'm always catching little bits here and there, um, you know, that I thought I had before, I'd seen before and, and uh, they just jump right out. So you just have to keep watching. Right. It's like uh, uh, rereading a book. Almost. Do you ever find yourself like, um, I, I know you're the tribute band, but do you find yourself maybe playing the instruments in your own style, putting your own little signature on it, or you're going straight for what you've seen in videos and, and how to bring that experience, let's say, back to the public? Well, that's, you know, that's the, I think, personally, I think that's the sort of mark of a good tribute band, that you don't put your own thing in there. Because people are not paying to see what you think is cool, you know, if, especially if you I'm say, you well, that. you know, well, it, no, it's like, you know, if you it. say, you know, we're a great Led Zeppelin tribute band, you know, and then you go and you play like ACDC, nobody's, nobody's <laughs> going to, you know, really, yeah. 
why bother, you know? Exactly. So what you do is you try to. We've all certainly been playing our instruments longer than the Beatles mm -hmm. have been playing their instruments from when they were, you know, first starting out. So the, the challenge is to not overdo it, you know, exactly. to play it like, you know, like now, it was then. Now, do you have anything coming up uh, within the next year? Or I don't know who to pass the mic to. I don't want to exclude. Come on, get closer. Now, what I want to ask you is about the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. And um, a lovely place. Question. Love, lovely place. Fill me in, baby, please, quick. Well, we started off uh, just, I mean, it's a great, you know, it's, it's the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame mm. in Cleveland, Ohio. Some of us are from uh, the sort of northeastern Ohio area. And they have a new exhibit about the Beatles coming in, and it's tomorrow. And we're going really? straight from here, straight to Cleveland. All, all the way to Cleveland. And, uh, yeah, we've got to get driving as soon as we start. Wow. Yeah, right, yeah. Oh, that's incredible. <laughs> so are you going to leave tonight from the show and go, or are you going to stay here well, tonight? We're, we're leaving right after the show. Wow. Yeah, okay, that's, a, that's a long... Yeah. yeah, we need those ribs, though. Those These ribs are really good. I'm a rib judge. My ninth year being a celebrity judge, and they give me free ribs, and I don't have to eat for months. <laughs> <laughs> I freeze them all. The have you found any ghosts in those ribs? That's what no, I'd like to know. No, actually, let me tell you a story. There's buried treasure here on Anheuser Busch property. Well, it's, it's in a, that it's building a, right there. There's no, no secrets. No, no, no. It's a true. It's a true story from 16. 36. You got to go to my website, cctheHuntress.com, and, and look for Ghosts of Anheuser Busch. There's this gold here, and it's it's not fictional, but it was wow. buried on the property. We did a ghost thing, um, a ghost show on it. What I do is I like to take history, science, and spirituality as factual and put that in the program, and then whatever's left over is paranormal. I don't just go, I don't run out of the buildings like, screaming there's a ghost. I'm, I'm, hey, I'm doing the interview on myself. <laughs> well, we can talk about that later. But anyways, what I want to do before we wrap up the interview is get a load of your website. What's your website? 1964thetribute.com. Excellent. And, and you can, you know, there's all sorts of things you want to see and some things you don't want to see on there as well. Yeah, I thought I, everything was great on your website. I really like it. Well, it's really you. hip and uh, you, you know much. up to date. I could I could use that on, on my site alone. Um, is there anything special you want to leave and, and depart your fans with? Just a big thank you for showing up. But we've had fans uh, up in this um, sort of Manchester area and well, most of New England. You know, we get people that come out every time we perform and people we've known for 20 years that keep right. coming out to see us. We just Isn't like to say nice? thanks to all the older fans and thanks to the new fans as well. So oh, thank you guys Cheers. very, very much. Thanks, Cece, for having thank us Thank you. On. Thank you so very, very much. Enjoy your show tonight. Enjoy the ribs. Have a safe trip back. Okay. Right. Thank Cheers. You. Cheers. And then yeah, now you all kiss each other. Okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> bye bye. See bye. you later. Bye. <laughs> And as I understand it, Rolling Stones has rated this band the best Beatles tribute band on the earth. Yeah. So you're ready to hear them? Yeah. Do you want to hear more from me or you want to hear them? Yeah. Them. All right, let's go. The tribute, 1964. Yeah. One, two, three.
Shut up.